Good morning. So today we're going to do baked ziti. Baked ziti was my go-to comfort food um, during the 1980s. Early 80s, I lived in New York City. I owned an aerobic exercise studio. Every Tuesday night, there was a pizzeria on my way home that I would stop into. And I think I probably paid, I don't know, like five or seven dollars. And it had to have been a pound of pasta. It was a great big honking dish of beautiful baked ziti, marinara, ricotta cheese, and mozzarella. And I still, I still chase it. I loved that dish. And it was not a fancy place at all. It was literally a place where you would go and buy a slice of pizza. So years later, when I was in Sicily, I saw baked ziti again on a menu in a little trattoria that Ralph and I went to. And so I ordered it because I was just curious as to whether or not it would be similar. And it was bang on, which makes perfect sense because there's so much influence, Sicilian influence in New York City. So American Italian baked ziti tastes identical to Sicilian baked ziti. So this morning I thought it would be a great dish to share with you given that Mother's Day is coming up on Sunday and should you be so inclined and um, would like to make a dish for your mom this is the one to make. It's absolutely delicious and crazy simple. So you're gonna look like a superstar. So before the video started, just uh, in the interest of time, and I know that I always say that, I'd love to keep you here for a couple of hours, but I kind of feel you got other things to do. So I started with an arrabbiata sauce. So arrabbiata, translation, hot as hell, literally, um, is a really delicious, great sauce for you to have in your recipe box. So when I'm done the live video today, I'm going to sit down and um, write this all out and have it on my blog, and the link will be there for you so that you can follow it step by step. But very quickly, arrabbiata is um, olive oil, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil with four cloves of garlic. So pick really nice, big, fat, juicy garlic cloves. You want them nice and fresh. Um, mince those up and add them to the olive oil. Don't let them brown. You're just flavoring that olive oil, gently cooking, cooking that garlic. And then you're going to use two 400 ml cans of pulpa. So this is, this. I've talked about this before. I love this product. It just has a really nice texture for the sauce. Now, if you can't get your hands on it, it is available at Sobeys or Superstore, but if you can't find it, you can use whatever tomatoes that you have on hand. If you have whole, as long as they're imported, let me qualify that. You need to use imported Italian tomatoes. If you have whole plum tomatoes, just take your hand and crush each tomato before you drop it into the pot. It will, because you don't want this sauce cooking for a long, long time. So two 400 uh, ml cans of pulpa, if you can find it, four garlic cloves, two tablespoons of olive oil, two teaspoons of dried chili flakes, and about a teaspoon of sea salt. And you just bring that up to, to a bubble, and then turn the heat back, let it simmer for about 10 minutes, and you're all done. That's all there is to it. So that's your sauce. Now, for the, the pasta, obviously, by the name of the dish, I used ziti. So I love Garofalo's pasta, which you can find also at Sobeys. It's the same price as all the imported pastas. They, they sort of keep their pricing pretty tight. So I paid, I think, $2.59, and this is a 500 gram bag. So, and I, as you can see, I used about three quarters of the bag for this recipe. Um, a, a whole bag will feed six people generously. So I pre-cooked the pasta. So something for you to know, on the imported pastas, they'll have a recommended cooking time. Always keep in mind that Italians like their pasta al dente, so do I. Their al dente and mine, totally different. I don't like to see a ring of flour on the inside of the pasta when I cut it. I want it cooked all the way through. I don't want it soft. I still want it firm to the bite, but I don't want it raw. 
for whatever reason, they tend to still have quite a white ring on the inside of the pasta. So um, I, I take their, their time on the package um, with a grain of salt. I always, I'll go to there and then I start checking. So because this pasta is going to be boiled first and then put into a dish that you're going to put in the oven, if you bake, uh, boil it at their recommended time, you'll be bang on because that pasta is going to continue to cook when it's in the oven. So that's the stuff that I did ahead of time. So let's get going. All right, so what I'm going to show you, which is really fun, is the ricotta filling. Now, if you were to go online and research baked ziti, there would be lots of recipes that would just tell you to take the ricotta and drop dollops of it on your casserole. And because here in Atlanta, Canada, we can't get our hands on imported ricotta cheese, I think that you would find it kind of insipid. It's really not that tasty. You need to embellish it. So what I do, is I take, uh, let's see, this is uh, 475 grams of ricotta and I used Tresteli, that's the, the brand that I like, and I put it in a cheesecloth, so can you see that? A cheesecloth lined sieve because I want any liquid that's in that ricotta gone. And so I will let it sit there for about an hour, an hour is sufficient, and then I'm gonna drop that ricotta right into a mixing bowl. And then you're just gonna throw that cheesecloth away, which I will do once this show is over. So, so I have 475 grams of ricotta. I'm gonna take one egg, and um, now, if you were doing this properly, which I'm not at the moment, I'm gonna just cheat here a little bit, and I'm gonna beat that. I should have beaten it before I dropped it into the ricotta. It just makes your job a little bit easier. So one egg, there we go. One egg to 475 grams of pasta. You're gonna give it a few cranks of pepper, freshly ground pepper. I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of Malden sea salt flakes and I'm crushing them in my fingers before it goes into, into the cheese. And then I'm going to use fresh nutmeg so just in case you've never seen, so that's, that's what a nutmeg looks like. It actually looks like a nut. And if you can see that, it, it's really beautiful on the inside. So my little nutmeg grater, and I'm going to grate in, I don't know, about a half a teaspoon. And if you're not a big fan of nutmeg, then don't use it. I think that it adds a really beautiful flavor. So now I'm going to fold that egg, the beaten egg, into my ricotta. Now the reason that I do that is it's going to give the ricotta, once it's baked in the casserole, more body. And now the best part, I am also going to add about a cup of grated Reggiano Parmesan. So just put that in, it's about a cup. So Parmigiano Reggiano, I've spoken about it before. I know I sound a little bit like a broken record, but here's the thing. When you are cooking Italian, you're not using a lot, a lot of ingredients. So use the best ingredients you can find. There's no point if a dish only calls for four separate ingredients to take a shortcut and you sort of use the North American facsimile. It's, you're not gonna get the same product. So use the imported Italian and you're gonna love the results. So this is this filling is all ready. That's it, that's all there is to it. So it has lots of body. It smells unbelievable. So I'm just gonna set that aside and now we're gonna to start to build the ziti. So you're gonna take a casserole dish, a dish that you can put in the oven and make sure you spray it because once it's baked, you don't want it stuck on the bottom of the pan. So we just set that aside. <coughs> It's got a spray of cooking spray in my mouth. Okay, so this, here's the sauce, looks beautiful. Now I'm gonna take about a third of that sauce and I'm gonna drop it on my pasta. And I'm gonna stir that up. So basically I'm just lightly coating the pasta. Now I'm going to take 
half of that pasta and drop it into the bottom of my casserole dish. Okay, and then spread that out. Now I'm going to take the sauce and about half of what is left, I'm just gonna put that over the top, easy as pie. And then I'm going to take a handful of the grated Parmigiana, put that over. And then I'm going to take half of the ricotta mixture and I'm going to, so let's say I'm going to, with this, I'm going to feed four people. I'm going to take half of what's in the bowl and divide that in four. That way, when I'm serving it, I can see where the dollops are and that will help me with my portioning. Okay, so I've got half in there. And now I'm going to take shredded mozzarella. So I have used the, um, the Saputo the four blend Italian blend. You can use just straight mozzarella if you want. So that's a that's quite a handful. I'm gonna say that's probably about a cup and a half. And so obviously we're not watching calories on this one, but this, it's really worth it. So it's a treat, it's Mother's Day, it's okay. Alrighty, so that's the first layer. And now we're just gonna do it all over again. So you're gonna drop your pasta on top. So then carefully spread it out. Try not to smash down what you've already got in there. Then you're gonna take the last of the sauce and pour it over. It's beautiful. Here we go. Now, if you don't like spice, or maybe your mom doesn't like spice, you could also use the marinara sauce that I taught, um, gosh, I don't know, it was a few weeks ago, but if you, uh, Definitely on my blog, like by Michelle, or if you wanted, I don't know if I, maybe I didn't do a live video on that one, I'm not sure. Okay, so then we're going to take the last of the shredded Parmigiana. And now we have the last. Again, you're going to divide this ricotta into four portions. So these are massive portions. So I'm looking at this and thinking that possibly I could get, I might even be able to get eight portions out of this. It really, as I always say, it just depends on how, how hearty your family's appetites are. All right, and then the last thing, we're going to take the shredded mozzarella. So again, probably, probably a cup and a half. So you're gonna have your, your oven at 400 degrees. Now, there's two schools on this. You can tent this with aluminum foil and put it in the oven. That way, your cheese is going to stay really nice and gooey. You can tell which way I like it. Um, or you can put it in the oven as it is. Now, if you put it in the oven and it's not covered, obviously, the top is gonna to get really crispy. It just depends on what you like, or split the difference and do the majority of the cooking time with it covered, and then maybe in the last 15 minutes, take the aluminum foil off and finish it that way. So as I said, it's gonna be 400 degrees in the oven, and this casserole will probably take between 35 and 45 minutes. I would start to watch it at 35. So you wanna see that the sauce is bubbling, that the cheese is completely melted, and that it's lightly browned. If you like it crispier, then let it go a little bit longer. So I would say if someone in my family wanted to surprise me with a delicious Mother's Day lunch or dinner, add a little salad, some crusty bread, a glass of wine, and you have got a really beautiful, beautiful gift for your mom. So that's it. Bake ziti. And now, uh, just some variations. If you wanted to add vegetables, by all means, throw them in. Saute up some bell, bell peppers, some mushrooms, some onions, zucchini, whatever vegetables you like. Um, and if you would like to add meat, then why not try some uh, hot Italian sausage, some mild Italian sausage, it would be awesome. But this is the classic, this is the classic baked ziti. So there you have it. 
not really a great day out there. So maybe it's a good day to make, make some big ziti ahead of time. You can have it twice this week. Anyway, have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.